In this video, I want to do a quick summary of how I build a dashboard tied into the Bloomberg terminal. I'm logged into Bloomberg. I'm not going to actually be in the Bloomberg itself, but I'm going to go over to an Excel file. It's an Excel file I can send to you if you email me. It's linked to Bloomberg. You can see right here the formula up here, BDH, Bloomberg Data Historical. B11 is which index I'm looking for. This first column, it's the S&P 500, S &P 500 stock index. B13 shows you that we want the last price. So we're just looking at price change. We're not total return. And the starting date was whatever you want to pick. You can put any date in there you want. I'll leave end date blank so that every time I load this file, it automatically updates to today. And I bring in whatever data I want. So I'm here, I'm bringing in indexes. So the SPX index is the S&P 500 stock index. SML is small cap stocks. I brought in the title here below. The Russell 3000 growth, Russell 3000 value, the NASDAQ, et cetera, all the way across. And so what I'm hoping to do here is get a sense of what markets are doing uh, all the way across, it's pulling this data in. And off to the right, if you go over to the right of the spreadsheet, there's graphs. So it shows me what's happened this last week, year to date, and last 12 months. And the way I did that, if you go back up to A3, I had the function equal today. So I get today's date. And I have minus 365. So I get last year. I might have to adjust that once we hit leap year. I have the last day of the previous year 12 31 2023 and then i have minus seven so half a week ago and so that's why i'm getting price change for the week price change for the year to date and the last 12 months so i can see which markets have been moving the most if you want to be able to use this at home so you don't have a bloomberg once you pull the data in bloomberg you can highlight all of these cells that are pulling from Bloomberg and copy and go over to the second sheet, which is the exact same spreadsheet, go to A1 and paste it as values. And then you will have the updated data, but in a, in a format that you can use on a non-Bloomberg tied machine. I also do the exact same thing with sectors. So I have technology, energy, financials. So I have a separate sheet for sectors. I have all the sectors for the S&P 500 and the same thing. The one week change, you can see communication services because Facebook and Alphabet have been doing really, really well. They're up a bunch. And then you say the year to date change, you can see those sectors that are very sensitive to interest rates like utilities and real estate are down. Communication service, again, because of Facebook and Google is up a bunch. And then last 12 months, there you see communication services, again, in tech are up a bunch. So all the growth areas are up a bunch. And, and again, I can take everything that I pull from Bloomberg and copy it. And this next page is the exact same sheet. Go to A1 and paste it as values, and then I can use this from a machine at home. If I go back to the very first sheet that I did, there's no limit to what you can put up there in the title of whatever market you're looking for. You could, you could do Europe, you could do specific emerging markets. You just have to find the index, and Bloomberg will help you do that on the Bloomberg terminal. And you can look for whatever account you, you want. Or you can put individual stocks. I could put AAPL. And since it's a stock, I don't type index. I'll type US space, US space equity. And when I do that, I now have Apple. So anything you can put up here will, will work. There are other functions besides last price. They do have a function called total return. So if you want a total return to include dividends, you can do that. That doesn't always work with the indexes because some of the index values are price only. So you have to be careful on that. But if you're doing an individual stock that pays dividends, you'd want to use that function. You can do economic data. You can do any kind of data. If you do financial data, such as earnings, revenues, you can change the formula here 
the, the instead do this as a monthly or quarterly, quarterly if it's financial data. If you wanted to do this from scratch, I'm gonna add a new sheet here and just show you how you can create your own from scratch. Make sure you have Bloomberg here. If you don't, you have to fix that in the Bloomberg machine and the Bloomberg lab by typing API where it says diagnosis, diagnostics. You click on that, you click start. And after it finishes, then click repair. You have to be out of all Microsoft products to do that. So if you're in Microsoft Excel, Word, PowerPoint, any of those, you have to click off of them, then run the diagnostics, and then you should get the Bloomberg button. Once you get that, they have this thing called uh, Spreadsheet Builder. I like to go down to historical data. Then you just look for what you're looking for. I can bring in the S&P 500. I can bring in Apple. And then next, I say I want to say last price. Then I tell it I want it back to say, say 12, 31, 2019, so kind of pre-COVID. You can do daily, monthly, whatever you want to do. Say next, I so usually don't adjust this page because it comes out the way I want it and say finish. And then I've got it built. I can change my starting date very easily. I can make this 2000 if I want and it updates everything automatically. If I didn't want the SPX, I wanted the small cap, I can change that. So once you get it set up, you have it, you can change anything, you have everything you need. If you want to do graphs or charts, those type of things, you, you just have to build it yourself, however you want to adjust it. But it's very, very easy, very friendly. What I like about this with having the, 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 the today function in there is down here, it's just automatically going to pull today's price. So every time you open this spreadsheet, it automatically updates to the latest piece of information no matter what you're using if you're using monthly data then it's only going to update when you have a new month so monthly data would require a little bit of extra adjustments this one is set up really to do daily data so it works really really well if you're doing interest rates stock markets credit spreads those those work pretty well on a daily basis financial data economic data is going to be either monthly or quarterly so you would have to adjust some there but that's the idea of a, of a dashboard is that you want to have a file that when you open it up it automatically updates and it has you focused on the things you want focused on and then what i'd recommend is come in once a week look at it speak out loud what's going out on maybe you have someone meet with you and you say wow uh, s p is up quite a bit this week the whole stock market's doing really well this last week year to date though small cap still are struggling where Japan is having an incredible run. And then the last 12 months, Japan really has been the strongest one, although the U.S. stock market has done really well. It's still a growth stock market. Growth stocks are up a bunch, where value stocks are not up much at all. I've been making my bet on, on value. That worked really well in 2022, but has unwound in 2023 and so far this year. But we'll, we'll see uh, if my strategy works, but here I can in very short time see what's going on. And so if I go into an interview, I'm going to very be able to very quickly talk about what markets are doing and have an insight not typical for an undergraduate student. Hope that helps.